ask any number of your friends, what is ChatGPT? They will probably know a decent enough amount to answer, right? If you ask any number of my friends what I do, their eyes roll back in their head and they start mumbling something about engineering. <laughs> yes, ChatGPT has made AI a household name, but there is a whole lot more to the AI revolution. In order for our AI systems to be successful, we need to understand AI system development, the challenges inherent with memory, scalability, and bandwidth. And we need to look at the connectivity solutions these systems use. And today, we're talking about that last bit, machine learning and artificial intelligence connectivity solutions. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Matthew Burns from Samtech and I investigate a variety of crucial design considerations for AI and ML designs. The role that AI chipsets play in the development of these systems and why the right connectivity solution can make all the difference when it comes to your machine learning or artificial intelligence design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. It's great to be with you again. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about AI and ML system architecture connectivity solutions today. But Matt, before we dig into the details, let's talk about the current state of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Amelia, we're glad to. Over the last several months, the public has been captivated by the capabilities of artificial intelligence in a way I've never seen before. And all of that is based on how much interest in the public domain that chat GPT has created. You know, I've got aunts and uncles, I've got grandparents, I've got extended family members, friends who are not techies at all that sometimes they don't even know what I and you do in this industry, but they know what chat GPT is because they're using this algorithm, they're using this tool to do all sorts of cool things. And I think that's so cool. And, you know, the reason that's so important is, is now that the public has this perception or this understanding of the power of artificial intelligence, it's affecting so many aspects of our lives that so many people may not be aware of, right? So just as a study, a couple of weeks ago, I just did a quick search on Google on news items that came up around AI. And this slide just kind of captures uh, a few of them, right? I thought one that was interesting by the Wall Street Journal, MBA students versus chat GPT, what comes up with the most innovative ideas. I'll let you read the article to kind of see the conclusion. Something else that's been in the big news are the strikes in Hollywood. One of the main concerns there for both the screenwriters and the actors is how chat GPT is influencing that industry. The sign here shows how some authors are actually suing the makers of chat GPT for copyright infringement. We see it in artificial intelligence when it comes to military applications, making artificial characters. Obviously, everybody wants to be able to buy the next NVIDIA. What's going to be the next big stock winner? So again, this just helps us to see that AI is in the news, people are interested in it, and it's going to continue to influence our life. You know, people say, have we reached the apex? And I, personally, I think we're in the first inning to use baseball parlance. I think you're right. So when it comes to connectivity solutions in this arena, we need to keep low latency and high bandwidth in mind, right? But what other design considerations do we need to think about? From a signal integrity standpoint, Amelia, you hit the nail on the head, right? These AI system architectures are using bleeding edge performance, right? 56 gigabit per second, 112 gigabit, PCI Express, CXL. But speed is not necessarily just the only concern. And the reason I say that is AI system implementation is not just a single solution. It's not like everybody has a reference design, knows how what a computer looks like or a laptop, or if someone says, what's the block diagram for a drone, you can kind of piece that together. But when someone asks the question, what does a system architecture look like for an artificial intelligence or machine learning implementation, you can't answer that because it could be in the data center or it could be in your smartwatch. So AI is really everywhere. And what's interesting is, is when you start to look at the chipsets that implement AI, it's not a single solution. It can be an 8-bit micro, it can be a 32-bit SOC, and then you've got something that's more along the high end, GPU, which obviously everyone's aware of with NVIDIA. 
but you've got TPUs, FPGAs, all these unique solutions that are coming onto the market because it's an application-specific implementation. We do have to ask about performance. It's not only from, from a speed standpoint, but how much power draw, how do I get rid of that power, how do I get rid of the thermal? And what's interesting, too, is because things are so application-specific, looking at this last bullet point, where Samtech really sees this going, at least from our perspective, is four areas. We're seeing AI chipsets. You and I are very familiar with the embedded computing ecosystem. So you've got system on modules, computer on modules, carrier cards, unique AI acceleration platforms, and then really application-specific solutions. So let's talk more in depth about those AI chipsets. There's a number of solutions coming on the market that perform AI functions. Looking at AI inference and training at the data center level, not only do you need a single GPU, you need 10,000 GPUs because the data sets are so large, right? A good example of that, chat GPT, the actual data cell for that model is like 650 gigabytes. Now, we may think, you know, I can fit 650 gigabytes on the hard drive on my laptop, and that's true. But can you calculate that with a million instances at the same time using your laptop? Of course not. So you have to replicate that 650 gigabytes across 10,000 GPUs in a data center because of all the demands for using the uh, chat GPT algorithm that the average person in public is generating. So when we apply that to an AI chipset, there's, you know, the traditional semiconductor vendors, SOCs, GPUs, TPUs, CPUs, et cetera, et cetera. But you and I both know from working semiconductor industry for as long as we have been, to test those solutions, you need evaluation development platforms. So when it comes to evaluation development platforms for those various chipsets, they require specialized interconnect throughout the data from one port to the next. Also, if you're scaling, you've got development kit one, development kit two, development kit three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As you scale the system or as you try to emulate the system, that's really where we're talking about in terms of where next generation high-speed connectivity fits. Okay, so Matt, what kind of solutions does Samtech offer that would be a good fit for these AI chipsets? Well, a number of the evaluation platforms have expansion ports, and a lot of these leverage some of the existing technology that comes from the FPGO ecosystem, Amelia. So you and I have talked a lot about FMC, FMC Plus, and those types of things. So a connector that we use that's very prevalent with an AI chipset ecosystem is our C-Ray high-density open pin field array. Some of the features of C-Ray, low insertion force and extraction forces, especially for high pin count arrays, our differential vias are used to optimize the performance of the interconnect up to 56 gigabit per second per pin. It's a small pitch, 1.27 millimeter, various stack heights. We can support up to 560 positions, uses our rugged edge rate contacts, which are good for a number of applications. And then we can support orientations, parallel, perpendicular, or coplanar. As we roll on to this next slide, an additional feature of C-Ray and a lot of our open pin field arrays is the fact that any one pin can perform as a high-speed differential pair, a single-ended signal, or deliver a fair amount of current or power. So that flexibility within the interconnect allows Samtech to work with an AI chipset vendor to optimize the pinout and to optimize the performance of the high-speed signals, high-speed differential pairs, the signals, and the power through the interconnect. So, Matt, beyond chipsets, I've seen a lot of AI SOMs and comms these days. So can we talk about those kind of designs a bit as well? Of course. I find it ironic, Amelia, that a lot of the AI chipset vendors are starting to discover the benefits that SOMs and comms bring to the embedded computing ecosystem, right? These SOMs and comms are complete compute systems on a single PCB, which include the MCU, the RAM, the I.O., the peripherals. In addition, we're starting to see the AI chipsets being attached right next to the CPU. We were just at an AI hardware summit a few weeks ago, Silicon Valley, and one of the chipset providers came up to Samtech and said, hey, we've got this great format. Now we want to put it in a SOM. Can you help us make one? Sure, we're happy to. In addition to the compute system, it includes system I.O. and peripherals routed from the chipsets to the connectors and the connectors down to the carrier boards. It also provides a nice path from prototype to production. And then, you know, the AI system can either be the single chipset that's on the SOM or can scale the flexibility uh, of the SOM by including multiple SOMs within a single carrier card. And obviously, some of the latest solutions on the market include increased speed and density, as well as small footprints. So what specific Samtex solutions would you suggest in this case? C-Ray is obviously a great solution for embedded SOMs and comms, but We've come out with a new product over the last couple of years that we call our Accelerate HP High Performance Array. It's open pin field array, very similar to C-Ray, but it takes us to that next level of performance, getting from 56 to 112 gigabit. 
A couple of the reasons we were able to do that, it's a very small, dense pitch, 0.635 millimeter between the pins along the row, but we have additional space between the rows of pins to allow differential signaling to be routed both in a north-south and an east-west direction. So by optimizing the breakout of the signals from the pins to the PCB, we can get that increased performance. Accelerate currently supports up to 400 pins, but we have roadmap up to 1,000 for several AI applications. Low profile options, both P5 and 10, it's able to support PCI 6 and 100 gigabit Ethernet. It also comes with a BGA attach process, which aligns with several industry standard BGA surface mount manufacturing. It's also cost optimized. So Amelia, a good example of where we use Accelerate HP is within the new PICMIC COM HPC specification. The PICMIC COM Express standard has been the workhorse form factor for embedded computing for the last 15 to 20 years. ComHPC has come out over the last few years as sort of a migration path for high-performance systems. Just a bit about ComHPC, server and client modules, you're going from 440 pins up to 800 pins total because you use two 400-pin connector pairs, system management interface. What's really cool about ComHPC, and this I think was ingenious of the committee when they put it together, was let's target other compute solutions besides x86, whether that's RISC, FPGAs, GPUs, or the like. ComHPC can be implemented in the same Com Express solutions, but potentially higher end CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs that we're finding so commonplace in AI and ML applications, as well as the necessary increased memory and increased and faster IO options. Why are we talking about this? Well, the connectors that are used within the ComHPC specification are based on Samtech's Accelerate HP high performance arrays, which we talked about on the previous slides. So we're real excited to see a real world practical application of our high speed, high density arrays when it comes to AI and ML implementation. So what kind of Samtech connectivity solutions would be a good fit here? Well, in addition to COMHPC, we also see a number of other SOMs and COMs that need maybe not 112 gigabit performance, maybe it's 56, but they need something that's denser and smaller than C-Ray. So another solution that we've come out with that's very similar to Accelerate HP is the Accelerate HD. The HD refers to high density. It's a smaller form factor than the Accelerate HP because we bring the pins closer together. It still uses the same 0.635 millimeter edge rate contact, 400 IOs, but it's five millimeter stack height and five millimeter width. Working with a lot of SOM and COM vendors, they really like Accelerate HD because of its size and its density. It's also open pin field, which allows for routing flexibility. It uses BGA for simplified processing and has a variety of stack heights, although uh, five millimeter and 10 millimeter are the sweet spots with this family. So Amelia, a good example of a SOM that's targeting AI that uses our Accelerate HD platform is the AMD CREA Adaptive Sysmon modules. Like we mentioned in terms of the benefits of SOMs and COMs, CREA was really developed by AMD for rapid development of hardware acceleration applications, which ties directly into AI and ML. It uses the latest Zinc Ultrascale MP uh, SOC solutions. It supports high performance up to 56 gigabit per second PAM4 data rates. And it comes with all the necessary memory power and LED status solutions as well. We're excited about the CREA platform because not only are we seeing it used in prototyping, but we're seeing customers use CREA as a compute platform for their end market application. A lot of it's based on AI. So the Accelerate HD connector that's used on CREA, two 240-pin connectors, which I'll access to the configurable I.O. as well. All right. So I've heard a lot about AI accelerators these days. Now, for my audience who may not know, give us some background and some details about these. Yeah, that's a great transition to this next portion of the chalk talk. In the computer science world or in the data center world, acceleration is really used to take compute processes that are repetitive that would traditionally be on the CPU and put it on another compute engine that can accelerate the performance of the ecosystem by computing those standard processes at a much higher rate. The industry has been doing compute acceleration for a number of years just to help continue to push Moore's law forward. The AI ecosystem has adopted that system architecture by getting rid of an FPGA and putting an AI compute engine right next to a CPU. Typically, you see these AI accelerators use industry standard form factors, PCI Express add-in cards, has been the most favorite. And you think about any type of compute platform, whether it's a PC, a laptop, a server, have a number of PCI Express I.O. ports. 
So those acceleration cards based on a Chem AIC form factor fit right next into the motherboard like we show in the illustration, and we're seeing that move forward. Adding in the AI acceleration platforms within a server and by scalability at data center really drives dramatic acceleration across a broad set of applications, especially in AI and ML. The reconfigurable nature of the acceleration uh, platforms offer an ideal fit for changing workloads, changing data sets when it comes to AI ML applications in the data center. All right. So I know from previous Chalk Talks that Samtech has a wide variety of PCI Express edge card solutions. So those would be a good connector in this case, right? Exactly. You know, the AI ML industry is leveraging PCI SIG infrastructure, PCI Express infrastructure, and we're one of the providers of those infrastructure. So when you look at the card edge systems, uh, we offer PCIe edge mount solutions and right angle uh, in support of PCI3 technology that gets us up to 8 gigabit per second. We're starting to see PCI4 uh, in a number of embedded solutions. Uh, in addition to the right angle and the edge mount, we also have what we call low profile uh, edge mount solution. So you can see that that's... Uh, Eight millimeters in height versus eleven millimeters. Uh, that was not that is not a industry standard connector, uh, but it does conform to the PCI SIG standards. It does allow for an extra three millimeters of PCB space on the add-in card. A customer came to us and asked if we could do it. We found a solution for them, and now we see multiple customers using that low-profile version of the connector. When we look at where we're at for practical implementation of PCI Express, PCI 5 uh, is all the rage right now, at least when it comes to add-in cards. So Samtech offers, you know, edge mount, right angle, low profile, vertical, through hole, and surface mount for PCI Gen 5. And we're also working on PCI 6 as that starts to ramp up implementation within AI and ML solutions. Okay, so what other edge card connectors does Samtech offer? So the interconnect industry and the standards industry it realized a few years ago, Amelia, was that PCI Express, great technology. But before PCI 6 was announced, there was some question as to whether PCI Express technology would continue to double every few years. So PCI 6 kind of answered that question, but you know, it was realized that there's a need for another industry standard card edge connector that can support not only higher data rates, but also increase in density. So the PCI Express connectors use a, a one millimeter pitch but there's new solutions that have come out based on the work via the Gen Z consortium, CXL, SNEA, uh, around this standard that's called SFFTA 1002. And what that did was to define a 0.6 millimeter card edge system for next generation implementation. So that was adopted by some industry standards such as EDSFF for memory, OCP NIC3 within data center, Gen Z for memory architectures and the like. And the series is the HSCC 6 DV interconnect that mates with industry standard 1.6 millimeter thick cards. It can support PCI Express or CXL 3.0. We also have high speed cables that attach to it, which we call our GC6 series. And connector also comes with some optional weld tabs for mechanical strength. So we've been able to run this not only at 64 gigabit per second PAM4 data rates, which coincides with PCI 6, we've also been able to run it at 112. So we've seen it for some 100 gigabit Ethernet applications as well. And maybe this isn't something that's focused on AI, but definitely within an AI system, having the ability to increase density and support bleeding edge data rates makes sense. So we're seeing an, a fair amount of interest in it within the ecosystem. So Matt, when it comes to AI systems in general, what kind of hardware trends are you seeing? I think the biggest trend that we're seeing is that AI ML system implementation is really application specific. So what I mean by that? Well, there's a bunch of AI chipset vendors that are coming up with unique solutions based on how they see the most efficient way to implement AI applications, whether that's inference training, large language models, or whatever. In addition, a number of the AI chipset vendors are also off designing end-to-end -end AI systems so that they can easily scale their solutions to enable larger data sets. Right? I talked earlier about ChatGPT. 650 gigabytes. You can probably process that on one GPU, but to scale it, you need to run it across 10,000 GPUs. So that's really where we see the industry going is, how can I create something that's modular? How can I create something that's scalable? How can I create something that provides all the memory and the bandwidth I need to help implement, whether it's inference, whatever the AI model is, is probably irrelevant. But how do I handle that large model, do so as fast as possible, and do so as efficiently as possible? 
So what that's creating are common electrical interconnect systems, leveraging PCI Express, leveraging CXL. We're seeing increased data channels. Data rates continue to increase, but at the same time, they also need optimized. When it gets into SI, sort of where Samtex starts to focus in on signal distortion minimized by routing signals over long-reach copper and optical cable assemblies, leveraging our flyover technology, starting to be adopted within these AI system architectures as well. Okay, so we also need to address backplane solutions here as well, right? What kind of solution would you recommend in this case? I've got my AI chipset. I've got an ASIC adjacent connector. I take that data out of the PCB, put it into the optical cable assembly, and you're able to send it over longer reach. So as this illustration shows, not only do you have on the left-hand side the data coming from the AI chipset to a backplane, but you're also adding a cabled backplane, which enables higher speed performance from one card to the next. It's scalable, it's dense, it's high performance, it's flexible. In this case, Samtex XMAX high-speed backplane cable assemblies fit the bill. So we offer a number of solutions, whether it's cable to cable, cable to board, mid-board, or panel. As we've shown, they're customizable and flexible. We see reduced costs at the system level or from a TCO standpoint instead of a higher layer PCB applications. We're very flexible in terms of the number of pairs we offer, four and six with a number of columns, anywhere from four to 16. Some of the industry standard backplane features like guidance and keying options. And obviously, we can add any type of basic adjacent connector we want to when it comes to routing the data from the AI chipset to the backplane. All right. I would also imagine that Samtex Firefly optical technology would be a good fit for AI and ML systems. Amelia, we've been doing these chalk talks so long, you sometimes know more about Samtech than I do. So you're spot on. <laughs> you're spot on in this observation, right? Our flyover technology is our optical solution. And what's neat about our solution is, is that we can place that optical transceiver right next to the AI chipset in any type of implementation. Our copper cable assemblies work great up to a few meters. But if you have to route those data signals from the bottom of a chassis all the way up to the top of the chassis or from one rack to another, you know, you're going from a few meters to maybe tens of meters, even hundreds of meters. So getting the data in the optical domain is a requirement, right? In essence, we take the data off board, simplifies the PCB layout and the SI, not only from IC to faceplate, like we do from a copper standpoint, but also from system to system where the fiber optics may fit in. At a high level, our Firefly systems support up to 28 gigabit per second per channel. We have the smallest footprint in the industry, so that allows for us to increase uh, the number of channels that we can support. Our solutions are protocol agnostic, which means we can support anywhere from Ethernet to InfiniBand to Fiber Channel to PCI Express to CXL or Aurora over the same optical transceiver. And the systems are very easy to implement. Our team of application engineers are willing to support the design in, in any type of application, especially AIML. Currently, we offer data rates up to 28 gigabit, but we're working on roadmap solutions that'll get us to 32, 56, and 112 gigabits per second as well. Excellent. Well, Matt, I think that's almost all the time I have for today. But before we go, can you recap your main points for me? Of course. AI systems continue to evolve at a very rapid rate, and we continue to see application-specific AI system architectures and implementations. What that means is being able to work with a partner like Samtech that has high-performance, low-latency interconnect solutions, which are scalable and flexible, ideally suited for AI system architectures. Not only do we have the hardware solutions, but we back it up with a global team of technical experts, online design tools, and world-class customer service that are available globally. We've also developed the uh, AI Connectivity Solutions Guide, which provides a little more detail in terms of some of the solutions we talked about within this Chalk Talk. For more information, please visit mauser.com slash Samtech to find out the latest on all these interconnect solutions that we've talked about. Excellent. Well, I think that is all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me yet again, Matt. Thank you, Amelia. We look forward to next time. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.